jazz right okay yeah cool hey everyone and yeah welcome to another chat fridays um we are recording as usual and we're going to stick it on the wp engine youtube builders account we have got myself ian polson product manager we've got matt shaw engineer anthony bachero engineer we haven't got liam today so if you've got block questions we'll try and do our best but if not we can pass them on to liam uh we haven't got anyone else from the team at the moment we haven't got anything major to report. The survey closed. Um, I think we were going to go and maybe do a, uh, a little deep dive into our uh, what we're working on for 6.2, specifically the options pages. I think, Matt, if you're, you want to do a quick demo, and then we can just do the usual. We've got the Q&A open. Uh, if the Q&A isn't working or available in your Zoom version, then just uh, throw a, a, a question in the chat. And feel free to raise your hand as well. And we can just actually, we're only a group of uh, not that many that we can, 12, we can chat amongst ourselves. So yeah, what is coming up in the next version of ACF? Brian, nice, I like what you've done there. Matt, do you wanna, do you wanna take it away? Yep. Okay, so ACF 6.2 is going to be including a UI for options pages. It's something that's existed in ACF for a while where you can create your own like settings page and add ACF fields to it, but you've only been able to do that in code. So we've finally added a UI option for this. And um, it's very similar to our post types and taxonomies UI. So it should feel very similar. Um, you can have just these three basic settings here and create an options page with just those. But we do offer all the different settings that are available. Um, if you've registered an options page before in code, they're all here. You can change the menu title and position, um, customize the labels for the update button and the updated message, and add some custom permissions and change where the options pages are saved to as well. Um, so that's the basic version of the UI. Um, you can see it just adds a site settings here. But what's really neat about it is it lets you add field groups to options pages much easier. So you can link any existing field groups. I don't have any set up right now. Or you can click add fields to site settings. So then that'll bring you to the add new field group page. It'll guess a title for you based on the options page that you've created. And then it will add the site settings options page that you just made into the location rules. So you can just go ahead and start adding fields and it will show up once you save the changes. So you see I have a text field there. Um, options pages supports child pages. So say you wanna um, create another options page that is the um, child of the site settings page that you just created, you can do that and it'll just automatically show up underneath doing this live. So of course something might've went wrong, but. I think see. you have to refresh with like when menu items get added. Oh no. Yeah, I think what I did was Redirect to child page. Let's try disabling that. There we go. There it is. Yeah, so that's one of the option settings. Um, maybe that shouldn't be the default. I know it's the default in code, but maybe that's something for us to look at because that could be kind of confusing. Um, but yeah, so now you have a header setting options page that's a child of that site settings options page. Um, and another really neat thing about all this is if oh, you you haven't done this already if you yeah is this, is this new new nice yeah it's very new so it might not work at all but i think it should um so say we wanted to have another options page named theme settings but we haven't created that yet um we can just go to the add new field group screen um i don't know color yeah <laughs> Just Google Analytics code fields here. Yeah. But uh, then you can go down to options page 
and say you don't have any set up or you don't like any of the ones that you have already, you can just click add new options page and a modal will show up. Still needs some design work, but that'll come before the proper release. And then you can just create an options page right from the field group page. And then that'll autofill into the location rules. You save changes. And then there's our new options page with the field group already added. So it's a lot faster, I think, than any other way of creating options pages. And then because it's in our new UI, um, you get all this nice stuff like local JSON. So you can sync the options pages between your different sites uh, or put them in version control. Um, you're able to export options pages to PHP code if you want to get them out of the UI. I think there's a lot of really neat stuff there. I think that's pretty much it. Anyone have any questions? Looks great, Matt. Thanks, Al. Thanks. Awesome. Matt, when you ran through that there, because obviously that's the first time I've seen that demo of you creating an options page in line of the edit, like the adding the field groups. Uh, I was thinking, because you named the field group like theme settings, and then obviously you're going to create an options page and probably more than likely it will call it theme settings or you know, should we pre-populate that to make it even easier, the modal? We could, yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, so the options page functionality is, is a feature of ACF Pro. Um, but yeah, historically, just having to, to register options pages with code isn't isn't so great when you're kind of deep in the field setting the fields and you you know you want to specify the location so having it right there in that flow is really is really good uh, okay Earl, you have said since options pages are being worked on is there any opportunity to add better actions that right okay so you did ask this the other time all right and somebody else mentioned this i think jason barl talked about this because he's was connecting WP GraphQL to options pages. And we have got, have we added that action hook already? Or we, we've got that on this piece of work, right? It's part of this piece of work. Um, I've dug into it. It's definitely doable, but yeah, we haven't started that yet, but we should probably, I think we're gonna have that ready for 6.2. Nice. And uh, oh, if you wouldn't mind, um, can you just explain a bit more what you mean about saving them more efficiently? I'm um, sure, yeah. So like right now they're just stored in the WordPress option table and um, it whenever you query them, there's like, it's it's just, it creates a lot of individual MySQL queries when you get them, even if you put them in things like a group field or like no matter how you structure them, there's no like singular query to get them out. Um, so it just like, I have a ton of options pages because that's how I sort of let clients change colors and different things about their site and yeah i could easily have three to five hundred queries because of all the fields that we give them mm. i wonder because we've got the auto load option haven't we that means wordpress kind of already goes and grabs all of the options or the options that are set as auto loaded to put into memory but i guess that's perhaps not going to help you with the, the, the setup that you just described Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, I'll have to look at that. I don't, is there, when you set up the options field, is there something built in to change it to allow auto load or would I have to filter that myself? No, so this is the thing, the, the options page, the add options page, like ACF function that you, you know, the only way you currently register it now has a bunch of arguments, but obviously it's sort of hidden in the docs. Whereas like Matt, if you, if you want to show your screen again, we can just show that because obviously the, the advanced settings um, panel in our UI now exposes every argument that could be passed to that function. So it kind of, it shines a light on things you probably might have missed maybe before. So that, yeah, auto load option switcher at the bottom. Yeah. That, that may help for sure. And that is something that you can do in the code right now. Yeah, I'm not sure though, if you have an existing settings page, options page with all the fields already saved. I'm not sure if enabling auto load will change that in the database, but 
that's maybe something to test offline and oh yeah that's a good shout because it's got back that about. that has to be saved at the the time you cr- presumably the function does sync that, you might though. just have to resave the options page yeah I, I imagine that's probably how it works yes interesting okay that makes sense i'll try that out thanks for uh thanks for highlighting it cool no worries Um, and Brian, you did ask what's coming up in the next version of ACF with a wink, and we kind of did cover that. But just just to just to sort of tease some other things we're doing, um, we will we'll be working on adding to the UI if you're creating a relationship field, um, a way to turn on uh, bidirectional relationships for that. It could be a relationship field, it could be a post object field, um, might be taxonomies or users as well. So you you can create once you save that relationship uh, from one post object to another, it would also save it on the other um, object. So it creates that relationship both ways. Um, and we're also, there's a piece of work that perhaps isn't that big and flashy, but I th- knowing the people that have mentioned it over the years, um, there's a, if you're, if you're using a taxonomy field, uh, an ACF field or a taxonomy, and then in conditional logic in your field group, you want to show another field based on the value that is selected for that taxonomy field. Currently, you really can't do that very easily in the UI. You have to sort of know that the term ID that you want to be targeting for the taxonomy. So we're kind of just giving that conditional logic section of the field group editor a bit of an update to say, right, show this field if this category is selected one of these, and you just basically have a drop down to select all the categories. So you can say, you know, if the category is X, bad example, but it works for um, users and um, as well. So you, you might only want to show the field if this user field has, you know, Joe Blogs selected, but you're actually going to be able to select from a drop down with the options of the users rather than having to guess the user IDs. So that's a kind of a um, not a very great. Um, piece that's just been hanging around for ages so yeah hopefully that will benefit people and hopefully eagle your yeah is in relation to that because that's good also uh multiple json paths as well yes yeah so if at the moment if you're using the json um the json function to load and save your field group definitions and now post type definitions and um taxonomy definitions in JSON. We kind of have that JSON syncing so you can save the definitions in a file that will get stored in version control and it's much easier to collaborate with people. Um, But that JSON is only loaded from one location, I think at the moment, and it doesn't really allow JSON being saved in multiple locations. So for example, if you've got um, a plugin that might add some field groups that your content editors need, the plugin has a JSON of the field group definition, but actually it's not very easy to then just tell ACF that there's a field group def- definition stored in the theme folder, the ACF JSON folder, and also in this plugin and this location and this location, you can't do that at the moment, but we're adding support for filtering the, the path that the JSON is going, the JSON files are grabbed from and saved back into. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, uh, a quality of life thing that's just been, bugging us for a while and bugging a load of other people for ages so hopefully the the 6.2 release will kind of nicely bring together quite a few little things that all together will just be um yeah quite impactful what else have we got yeah but feel free to unmute got a question in q a Oh yeah, a few weeks ago, on. asked if it was possible to add a character limit indicator when a field has a character limit set. Liam said it was a good idea. Uh, it sounded like it'd be worked in, and chance it will be in the next version. Yeah, I think the bad news, Kelly, is it isn't being worked in for the next version. Um, but we are, you know, taking all feature suggestions and ideas and trying to, you know, collect them and work out how 
how many people are asking for them and you know using that in terms of prioritization but i'll, I'll follow up with well I'll, I'll take a look in the ideas log to see where that's at um yeah and and just to just to confirm so this is you've set a, you, you create a text field you've said maximum characters 20 but then you really want to give that indication to your content editors that you know they're approaching that limit there is a limit that kind of thing Cool. All right, we've got loads of questions now. Let's... Oh, you've asked, I can file a GitHub issue on this, but speaking of site options with conditional logic, when you change something and save it, it does not wipe. Uh, the value of the newly hidden fields like it does with a block. Hmm. It, so this is fields, the field for fi a field group, um, conditional logic on fields that are part of an options uh, uh, page. Is this specific to that? Yeah. So if like if you have a block and you have various content and say you toggle something and it shows some fields and hides others, when you're using the block and block level fields, when you are using conditional logic and fields are hidden and you hit save, the values of those fields that have been hidden because of uh, conditional logic get wiped out. Um, so they're, they're null values and you reload the page and you, and you flip it so the conditional logic flips, they're empty. Um, but in, when you are using site options, it doesn't seem to do that. Like you do whatever toggles need to change the conditional logic and you reload the page and all the hidden fields still have their values. Ah, okay. Yeah, that might. Yeah, if you could, I'll, I'll try and reproduce this on my own, but if you could raise a GitHub issue or email or support um, with just like a basic, a couple steps to replicate that, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I don't mind if I don't get up issue. I just want to make sure it wasn't intentional because um, on the block level, it works well, but on, and on site options, it sort of caused me some trouble where I have to like look at the conditional field first and then ignore the ones that have been hidden. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll them. thank you. Cool, thanks. And we've got a question about um, if we've been exploring a block editor field which would be its equivalent would be the WYSIWYG field, um, but with the block editor inside. Um, ah, yeah, good, good question. That's a um, that's a tough one, but yeah, like the with with the way Gutenberg's been running, like it's all in iframes now. So I, I don't see why it would be hard. I mean, it will be hard, but <laughs> I don't see why it will be impossible to get another. And actually, um. Anthony froze. Oh, good. It's not me that's frozen because I, <laughs> I panic every time because my internet. Um, I'll put. I will. We have got an uh, like a internal idea for the block field type, but I don't know. Um, Neil, have you seen or do you use the ACF extended plugin? Hi there. Sorry, I, don't, I hope you don't mind me jumping in here. No, go um, for it. I have seen ACF extended. Um, I've never used it. Um, well, I've used the basic version, but I've not used the pro version. I did email them um, just to see if it would do what I was after, but I got no reply. And I was very hesitant to sort of pay for something. Um, if I sort of tested their support and they didn't get back to me. So I've sort of not, not purchased it. So I did see that it was available in there um, in a sort of limited fashion, um, but I wasn't sure whether to sort of go ahead. So I've sort of been just trying to do things a different way. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, the ACF extended product, we know there's so many users that are using it and getting value because it adds, you know, extra things and and things that don't exist in, in ACF because, you know, they've been added to, to serve different needs. But we we have seen like Conrad is the developer behind it who does sometimes pop into Chat Fridays. They're pretty good in terms of support. I'm there's a there's an ACF, it's kind of like an unofficial ACF Slack, but it's really it's been set up by the ACF extended developer Conrad. 
uh, and they're pretty he's pretty responsive in there however yeah obviously if, if you don't get a reply that's probably not a good sign um but yeah i that's what i was going to say because seeing maybe like a month or two ago he'd he'd brought out the block the block editor field type um which acf extended seems to be quite a good place to sort of do like the bleeding edge of like oh what we what we could do with acf and whereas we've got you know like a massive roadmap of features and that's an idea that we've got but until we sort of hear loads more people ask for it we probably wouldn't consider it so yeah it, if you want to have a second look at acf extended and it, it helps then that's probably the best place to to try although i, I am going to add your your sort of name and vote to our internal tracker for for that idea fantastic no i'll i'll definitely have a look now yeah now i've got sort of a positive um comment about acf extended pro then um that sort of gives me something to look into but uh, i i did reply to the um feedback survey you had uh the other Ooh, week yes. um, and you. i did mention about the block editor field it would I've, I've come across so so many scenarios where it would have been really really useful um, to have the the flexibility of blocks um instead of uh a wizzy work editor so because this is like to me the block the block field it's it's hard because I'm not building sites necessarily, but knowing that you've got the block editor or the classic editor, like what's you mentioned that there's been times recently where you've needed it. How is your how are you using WordPress then? Are you using the classic editor and you just want to control one section for your clients with the block editor? Uh, for example, if if I've got a page um, or a post type um, where I'm using the the content block editor for the main content of the page, but then I've got some other sort of attribute areas. So let's say I've got a page about a property uh, and I create attribute like um, want field for location, uh, pricing, uh, nearby amenities, stuff like that. Um, if, if, if our client wanted to say, put that content in two columns, I couldn't. I don't think I could do that with the WYSIWYG editor without adding some sort of class uh, on that. Whereas yeah. if I could specify that location field as a like location description field as a block editor, then they could put the content in. They could put images. They can split it into two columns, whatever they like, and I can just sort of square that onto the page. Uh, yeah, that's good. That is helpful. Thank you. I guess like if you i would imagine if liam was here because he's liam glad he's our sort of person that probably works with blocks the most i would imagine there is a way and maybe and correct me if i'm wrong where you probably could like use just the block editor completely to have like your main content area but then you have like a a, a block locking area that is the area that you need to have that extra sort of content zones, which you would then use the block editor for. But that's a bit of yeah. a shot in the dark. And and I, I think it would make sense for us to do like an allow list of um, of blocks for that area. Cause like you don't want to expose everything, but maybe you want to like only give columns and paragraphs, stuff like that. Yeah. Cause I think you can do that natively with WordPress, the block mm -hmm. editor, right? Yeah. You can you can do create sort of, yeah, block. Is it is it the pattern side of things where you create yeah, well, yeah, it could be like a, oh, that's what I'm, I was oh, trying to think of, like, maybe yeah. it's a template that you could use, like a template part that could be used inside of there. Um, and I think of like a, another, another area that like, uh, kind of is similar to this is like the menu or the, the, the way that you can edit a, a header and only allows you to use certain blocks or it exposes blocks that aren't available in the content. Like I could see that kind of stuff being setting in there. Um, so yeah. all of that's super possible. The block editor itself has a preference setting for managing blocks, and there are a number of third-party um, plugins that manage blocks. But the, the prefer if you go into the block editor and click on the three dots at the top and hit the preferences, there is a a preference that lets you turn off blocks, so you can you can control that and um, publish publish press blocks. I think will let you actually control the the on off a toggle for different blocks at the at the user role level so uh, there are those possibilities 
the I other part the biggest is, frustration uh with uh things like the block editor is just not being able to have like multiple of them on a page for different areas and that's that's effectively my reasoning for asking about a block block editor field yeah i think i do think there, there is either something right now or potentially something coming with the block editor that would allow like having sections of the editor that you could do but yeah i I, uh, my my only uh, talking about the ACF extended like that's probably the best way to go right now because I think the block editor field type would probably be quite far along our you know in our roadmap and trying to I think by the time we get to that there may be something even better in WordPress that allows you to kind of solve that problem but in a more native way maybe maybe a small update also from my side I have pretty much the same experience as Neil uh, our clients just don't feel like it's pretty much the same. You know, you have this Gutenberg, this fancy UI to edit text and, and titles or whatever inside blocks that we heavily customize. And then you have this old VisiVic field. Uh, feels just a bit unnatural. Not that it's a big issue for clients to use it. I think it's still straightforward to use, but it just feels like a bit off. So maybe it's just a design aspect from our clients, but maybe an input. So, Brian, are you saying you, you would also make use of a block editor field type then as well? I think it could help, even if it's just a very limited and well, strictly to use field with just, you know, like titles and text and all of that. I'm not sure if we need a full block support inside that, but at least yeah. to have this Visivik gone for sites that really go heavily on Gutenberg just to make the UI feel a bit more aligned. I think that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's good to hear that. I, I, I The one thing I wonder is is how how to handle that sidebar because yeah. um, <laughs> when you when you select <laughs> items, like a column has very, very detailed and granular like uh, settings. So I think like one, one, one immediate idea I have uh, is you could use those template parts to actually edit the settings and make uh, layouts for people. And then they can just go in there and enter in the text or put an image or whatever they need to do. So maybe it's it's the they that's one flow. I, I want to try how uh, ACFE does it because I'm, I'm curious how that gets handled. But yeah, that's what I was gonna it, say. Really curious how it works in ACFE and even just like thinking about like I've definitely set up a WYSIWYG on an options page before, and now I'm thinking like oh, maybe I could put a block editor in there. It could be pretty cool, but um. Also, like, I'm curious how something like that would work in ACF front end forms because a block editor on the front end sounds kind of cursed. But yeah, I guess Comments. that's <laughs> yeah, the block. Yeah, I, I mean, ACF forms is probably you would probably not want to put it there necessarily like, because it's for sort of data input rather than content creation, I guess. Um, but yeah. I think WordPress. I think WordPress actually enabled a, a limited block editor in the comment section of blog post. I'm checking because I I recall them talking about that. Yeah, whilst we're talking about ACF forms, it'd be interesting out of the group who uses who actually uses the ACF forms functionality. I know we've got we've got a ton of data from the survey actually, which is quite good, but. The, ACF has all these features, but and and we feel like we need to support every feature in every other feature to make sure it's all kind of compatible. But it's maybe sometimes not worth it from a usage point of view. From my side, I haven't used it until now, but. Uh... You know, definitely worth a try. Yeah, I think people people use it as, you know, a replacement, not a replacement, but an alternative to using something like Gravity Forms or another Forms plugin because they can they can create a form with code, um, and that form is controlled by you know your fields that you create in a field group, and then the data gets saved somewhere, and it, you you know you could create. Uh, a form that edits a post or a, you know data that's in the database rather than like form submissions i think maybe I, even i've got that wrong but 
No, no, through that, I uh, currently, until now, I only, always do it like that with Gravity Vis to auto populate the uh, data that is already inside the post to update it. But to be honest, it's also not a very neat solution. You have to put in quite a lot. Then you have specific fields that can't be updated. You have gallery fields. Uh, it's, I don't think there is really a very nice solution out there. So definitely should check out uh, what ACF Forms has to offer. Yeah. Any other any other questions? Feel free to unmute and go for it. Uh, we do it in the Q and A. Ah, good question, Al. I'll, I'll ask you a question back. Is anyone going to WordCamp EU, WordCamp Europe? I'm there, definitely. Oh, nice. Oh well, Brian. Myself and Liam are going to be at WordCamp Europe, uh, and we are working on Matt and potentially going to WordCamp US. Although so. it's Maybe. a little bit, a little bit further. Exactly the budget planning and everything, and working out the transportation is a bit slower because it's a bit further in the future. But even though it's not that far away, um, but yeah, we're, we're hoping to have. I think WP Engine itself will be. Well, we're definitely sponsors of of both i think um and so we're hoping to have some product people at both um both word camps so yeah it'll be good to meet in, per in person brian we'll be hanging around the um the word camp europe wp engine hosting booth and probably doing some demos um which will be nice we'll came, come across definitely yeah we'll visit you guys no issue awesome cool. our full team is there so we're quite a good group i guess oh, we'll have some fun there nice Just sound like there's not anyone um, definitely going to WordCamp US though. Yeah. I'm almost definitely going. Um, just waiting on, you know, um, approval from the company and all that. But I already bought a ticket and uh, I might en end up going on my own time, you know, but just confirming all the details right now. I did the same. I bought my ticket just in case. And I was just going to go myself. And then my boss was like, oh, why don't we just have the whole tub team go? Because they're based out of DC. So it's not too far away. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy a ticket just in case they deny the purchase request. <laughs> nice. Who else is going to go? Just, oh. Yeah, the WordCamp US tickets are small, aren't they, in comparison to the Europe ones? There was a bit of a bun fight to try and get them. I was like, yeah. yeah. I think they might even still be live right now. Um, yeah, they released a, a batch of um, like 700 or so, and they were gone in about 24 hours, 24 to 30 hours. And then they released a second batch of a smaller amount, like two to 300. Those are- Oh, they still gone. got- Yeah, those are sponsor gone. ones. Yeah, micro sponsors, there's still 250. Yeah. So somebody wants to be a micro sponsor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if the prices are probably similar to the Europe ones, but the, the prices for the tickets are so cheap. Even the micro sponsor ones seem quite cheap when you think of a conference. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to work out Europe. It'll be nice to catch up with people, do some demos. Um, any more questions? We can always wrap it up early if, if, if we're all good. I guess just a note on the survey, um, Neil mentioned that you'd filled that out. If anyone else filled it out, thank you very much. We obviously closed it on Friday last week um, and we'll be working on, you know, 
collating and and going through all the results and we will be publishing the results as, as we mentioned last time um but it's really helpful because e even looking at the results um, briefly as they've sort of been coming in it's really good to understand how people are using it and and just some of the answers to like what we could be doing better or what you need help with in wordpress there's been there's some really good um good insights there so that, thank you if you've taken that that's really good all right shall we call it and we will see you uh will we see you in two weeks what have we got anything yes what is two weeks from now actually we won't see you in two weeks because i think we have got a company day off haven't we on the ninth so we'll be doing it in a couple of weeks after that which is the 23rd but you won't see me because i'm actually on on time having time off so yeah we'll we'll send we'll do some tweets and let people know um about the next one on the 23rd and we'll try and we'll see you then i guess yeah Uh, what, it, oh is memorial day on the 23rd is it or is that that oh, yeah i keep forgetting we're off on monday <laughs> just yeah, mentally monday. like prepared for a two-day weekend so what yeah when's it's a uh, monday's memorial day but uh a lot of companies over here like i have a half day so i'm out at noon um and a lot of people take off for a long weekend so Gotcha. All righty, cool. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll let you know next time when we're doing it. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming. See you all later. Thanks, everyone.